The first time that I saw a paratrooper was at Fort McClellan. We were finishing up uh, our, our field exercise, and that was the end of basic training. And uh, at that particular time, they had, uh, most of us were slated to go to the Battle of the Bulge. But I was one of four people selected to stay back and help train some of the others. And um, I found out uh, they, they put on a demonstration of airborne troops uh, while we were out in the woods there. They set up a tent and a captain came and he had two sergeants with him. And uh, they were naturally recruiting for black uh, soldiers to become paratroopers. That's the first I ever had and saw, uh, saw of it. But uh, at that particular time, they had a tent set up and they showed us a, a film. And this film showed people jumping out of troopers, jumping out of airplanes. And I felt that this is something I think I'd like to do. And uh, I, uh, I guess I felt I had something to prove. If they were doing it, I'd like to do it. it it's dangerous, but I'd still like to do it. So, um, but we weren't given an opportunity then to sign up for some reason. It just didn't happen. And it wasn't until I got to Fort Benning and uh, I saw, actually saw my first black airborne troop. And uh, looking at the wings and the boots and so forth, it really made me crave, I, this is something I really want to do. And um, so I um, uh, applied, I was in a unit uh, on another part of the, ba uh, of the post, and I applied for it and I was turned down by my company commander. And the reason I found out was very selfish. He knew that I probably could handle the supply sergeant job. And uh, he felt that maybe this guy's got enough intelligence and he's probably honest enough because the supply, if anything that got lost or was stolen, he had to pay for out of his pocket. So he selected me to be his fall guy, so to speak. And uh, I didn't want it. I told him that I uh, had applied. He still had it probably on his desk at that particular time. But he refused to sign it. And he said, you will be my supply sergeant. So, um, but I didn't have that much longer to stay in the service. I guess I had a minute, uh, seven or eight more months. So I decided to okay, I don't have to do this forever. I'll be this guy's supply sergeant for uh, the rest of the time that I'm in. I'll get out and I'll come back in. And that's what I did. I got out, stayed about three weeks, came back in and was sent to um, Fort uh, Riley, Kansas, and where I applied. And a few months later, it came through and uh, I headed on to Fort Bragg, North Carolina from there. And that's when, uh, I guess I arrived there roughly about May of 47. And uh, I don't think any of us had any idea that the outfit was going to be integrated into the 82nd Airborne at that particular time. But uh, one of the things that, we, that uh, was done, how they selected uh, the troops in the 555th to go to jump school, which was down at Fort Benning, if you had, say, um, 100 applicants out there, and there was only 25 slots. Uh, there was a fellow they called the Greyhound. He could run as long as he wanted to. And the Greyhound would take this formation of 100 troops, and the last 25 standing would get to go to jump school. <laughs> so the training was rigorous. It, it was running. tough. It was tough. So tell me a little bit about the training for the 555th. Well, we, there wasn't a whole lot of getting around uh, you know, you didn't have a lot of money to go and do things, and a lot of what was done was right there in the unit. You, uh, uh, for example, uh, in the evening sometimes uh, one platoon would have uh, a person that they felt was the best push-up man, and he'd get, you'd get your push-up guy together, and they'd have a push-up contest, down there, see who would do the most push-ups. And uh, 
these they, these two guys would uh, go at it for a while, and it was just a lot of fun. Everybody was there. In fact, I had the opportunity to the fellow that I went to jump school with was a 19-year-old kid by the name of Chester Odom, who later became a doctor. And Chester was the first black man, or in fact, the first man in the Army to uh, get a 500 points on the PT test. That was a max. And he did the max. You know, there was the running, the pull-ups, the squat jumps, and all of those things. And he was did these, some of them were timed, of course, and he was the first one to get 100 points. And uh, this was really something. They put, uh, this was done down at Fort Benning, so they put his uh, name on a flag on the top of a one of the jump towers down there, and it stayed there for years.